Hi, everybody. Welcome to the lecture on classical conditioning. I'm sure you're curious as to what this actually is and how it's applied to life outside of our psychology classroom. Well, hopefully this lecture will give you a great understanding of that. So to start talking about classical conditioning, you, we want to focus on two important names in the history of psychology, Ivan Pavlov and John B. Watson. The picture here is that is, is one of Watson. And Watson and Pavlov, they studied behaviorism. Now, Pavlov didn't know at the time when he was doing his research that he was going to be considered one of the fathers of behaviorism and namely classical conditioning. But John B. Watson, he knew what he was doing. And we'll look at his work in another lecture at another time. I want to focus today on Ivan Pavlov. Here's a picture of Pavlov. Now, Pavlov was a Russian scientist who originally was studying digestive processes, and he decided to use dogs in his research. So he set up um, a research lab in his home and to study these digestive processes. What he didn't realize is that he would be discovering some very, very important concepts in classical conditioning and in all of psychology. Here are these concepts. So this is gonna seem really overwhelming and a little bit confusing at first, but I promise you between work you'll do at home and work we'll do in class, we will get this, we will nail this so that you walk away understanding each of these concepts. So the first idea you need to understand is neutral stimulus. A neutral stimulus is anything that elicits no response. Okay, so that could be anything. Right now, I'm looking at um, a cup in front of me, and the cup is eliciting no response from me whatsoever. The next terms seem overwhelming for some students. So I'm not going to give you the official psychology definition because that's just too much. I'm going to just give you a very simplified definition. So the first one, unconditioned stimulus, is any stimulus that brings about an automatic response. So the word conditioned means learned. When something is unconditioned, it means you have not learned it. So an unconditioned stimulus is any stimulus that brings about an automatic response. So for example, you hear a loud noise and you jump because you're startled. The loud noise is an unconditioned stimulus. Nobody taught you how to jump when you were startled. You just do it. Remember, it's your particular formation at work. The next concept, unconditioned response, is that response which is from an unconditioned stimulus. It is a response that is not learned. So take our loud noise example. The loud noise you hear causes you to jump because you're startled. So jumping and being startled is your unconditioned response. So those two concepts together, the US and the UR, are unlearned automatic stimulus and response. The next two concepts, conditioned stimulus and conditioned response, are learned behaviors. So a conditioned stimulus is any stimulus that brings about a learned conditioned response. And the conditioned response is any response that is caused by a conditioned stimulus. So let's talk about an example. You know how um, you're um, in class and you might be in really involved in something and the bell rings. And no matter what you're involved with, whether the teacher is speaking, whether you're doing a, a writing sample, you're doing a math problem, you automatically get up and walk out of the room. You put your stuff together and you move on to your next class. Well, the bell, the school bell, is a conditioned stimulus. We are taught to give the response of getting up and walking out of the room. Now, um, since you've been in high school for four years and you've always had bells and you've always gotten up and walked out, this has been a long-term conditioned response. When you go to college next year, you're not going to have any bells. So it's all based on the professor. Some professors let you go early, some on time, and some will even keep you to the end of their lecture, even if it means staying an extra 10 or 15 minutes. So conditioned stimulus, conditioned response our learned behavior is a learned behavior. So in our example, the bell ringing is the conditioned stimulus 
And the conditioned response is you packing up and moving on. We taught you how to do that. You didn't automatically know what that meant. So let's talk about Pavlov's actual experiment. So here's this little doggy hooked up and it looks like he's, you know, sort of not being nice to the dog, but trust me, the dog was fine. And um, so here you go. He gives the dog, puts the, some food in front of the dog. Okay, there's the dog. Now that is the unconditioned stimulus because it brings about the unconditioned response of salivation. All right, see how the dog is salivating? So that is an unconditioned stimulus, the food bringing about an unconditioned response, the salivation. So then Pavlov decides he's going to ring this tuning fork, this tone. And a tuning fork is used to tone a piano and it, um, tune a piano rather, and it makes this sort of high pitched noise. And so this is why um, this had no response. This is a neutral stimulus as far as the dog is concerned. Here's the neutral stimulus of the tone, no response. Then Pavlov paired the neutral stimulus, the tone, plus the food. So they were together, presented to the dog at the same time. Now, after continued pairings, the dog would hear the tone, see the food, salivate. The tone and the food together, salivates. The tone and the food together, salivates. So after repeated pairings, what do you suppose happened? After the pairing, after conditioning, he rang the tone just on its own without the food and the dog salivates. So the neutral stimulus alone now produces a conditioned response, thereby becoming a conditioned stimulus. So this was Pavlov's experiment. He originally set out to see how well or how ineffective dog's digestion was. And he came up with one of the most influential, enduring um, experiments in psycho psychological history. He actually ended up winning a Pulitzer Prize for it. Um, so uh, what I'd like you to do now is to um, sit down and write down a piece of, on a piece of paper um, an example of classical conditioning that you can think of. So remember, classical conditioning, oh, hold on, my phone is ringing. 